Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Buzz Kennington, Data Magnet, and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again, and now on to the story. Pretty Little Death Wilders, an audience with the War Queen. What the hell? 567B92 raised a paw and waved a head to her communications bank over to her desk. Back Commander, look at this. She pointed out a strange blips on her screen. Her back commander squinted at them in disbelief. That's a communication from an alien ship, using L codes. Now, there's something you don't see every day. What are they saying? Just a moment. 567B92 put her headphones back in place and listened. They say that the crew of a ship that was captured by the League and they've, uh, escaped captivity. Stolen a ship, it... It sounds like they need picking up. What the hell? That's what I just said. At first, everybody who'd heard about the escapees had believed it to be some kind of trick or hoax. After all, captured by alien enemies tended to result in the gruesome deaths of the prisoners, who chose a violent but noble end over being tortured for information or whatever else was in store. This was probably why a full-sized battleship was sent to pick them up. Then, the battleship got close enough for video, and the distinctly last face of Pack Commander Cal appeared on the comms screen. The story, as the former crew of the insert name here explained, was that they had been held prisoner and interrogated for many short cycles, only to find their way to a stellar league ship had escaped. Amazingly, they weren't even badly injured. A couple broken bones, several patches of blaster, scorched fur, and a bunch of small injuries from something their captors apparently referred to as barbed wire. Even more amazingly was the hero of the story. Usually this title would go to one of the top warriors of the pack, or even the pack commander. While they certainly deserve respect and honor for their courage and cunning, the real hero was a lowly ship technician. 099-827. Big Nines. He had apparently used his interrogation session against his captors to make them lower their guards and to gain a fascinating insights into their mindsets. For instance, he said to one baffled archivist, they put a lot of stock in making their ships and bases look extremely aesthetically pleasing. I suspect it's because they're hardly at war. So they have a lot of time to do these things like that. Hardly ever a war. The crew of the insert name here were escorted back to the craft immediately and welcomed aboard as brave survivors that they were. Their stolen ship was docked and set upon by technicians eager to learn about their foes. Medical staff examined the survivors and declared them to be remarkably healthy given their situation. I suppose the League aren't very good at torture, one of the medics surmised after giving Lucky Ears a clean bill of health. That's uh, the weird part. They didn't torture with us, they just asked a lot of really annoying questions. Excuse me? There was an instant media friendly. Though the last didn't exactly have much in the way of a free press, they did have the need to transmit important information around the craft in a digestible way. To that end, they had the equivalent of a state news network. The network broadcast images of the survivors to every crumb screen in the craft. The host discussed the possibility of new names, numbers, ranks, and honors for the brave crew of the insert name here, and especially for 099-827. It was utterly sensational. Even more sensational were the claims made by the crew themselves. No torture. Their captors caring for them on principle. No real attempts at any kind of brainwashing. War Queen Baya Marani watched these reports with interest. She drummed her claw tips on the council table. 
No other members of the council dared speak before she did. It took a while for her to speak, even when the comm screen was turned off. I want to speak to 099827, she said at last. No! A personal, private audience with the War Queen was something that most last could only dream of. It was reserved for those that achieved something truly incredible. All those with information considered absolutely paramount to the ongoing war effort. Hermes was a rare individual who met both of these criteria at once. Pack Commander Cull's plan had worked perfectly. He was going to talk with the War Queen. He was utterly terrified. Don't be, he thought to himself, adjusting his stress uniform as he was escorted down the labyrinthian tunnels to the craft at the central control sector. The War Queen is a smart woman. She wants what's best for our people. She'll listen to reason. Surely. Surely. It was not very convincing. Eventually, Hermes and his escort reached the imposing vault-like doors to the War Queen's chambers. Armed guards stood at attention, not taking the rise of the War Queen's guest for an instant. Hermes had never been given such a thorough security check in his life. Even the League hadn't been so intent on making sure he couldn't bring a weapon into a meeting. The all-clear was given, and the guard entered a six-digit code into the panel by the door, and the vault slid open. Beyond was a large hall, decorated with blown-out photographs of past warlords. In the middle of the room was a fancy-looking metal table. Hermes entered nervously, nearly jumping out of his skin at the sound of the vault door closing behind him. He cautiously made his way over to the table, his training made him visually check the entire room for vents, passageways, anything that he could be tactically used. Not that he'd need to. He wasn't about to talk to an enemy. Speaking of which, a door at the other end of the hallway swung open. A war queen Pia Marani walked in. She was exactly as imposing as Hermes had expected. The War Queen was clad in ceremonial armor that was as striking as it was protective, though she had forgotten her helmet for the purpose of the meeting. A plasma sword was holstered on her hip. She had two blasters holstered on a lower part of her chest plate and one on each side. Not that she would need them in most circumstances. Her claws were the longest and sharpest that Hermes had ever seen. He remembered the story he'd heard of how she became a war queen by slaying the previous war king in personal combat. Hermes bowed and showed his hand submissively. Marani bowed back politely. Technician 099827, I presume. Yes, my war queen. It is an honor to meet you. Likewise. Come on, sit down. We have a lot to discuss. Hermes took his place at the table. Marani sat across from him. She was a hard one to read. The large amounts of scar tissue on her face didn't help. She poured two glasses of water and handed one to Hermes. He sniffed it, as was custom, then took a sip. So, Marani said after her own sip, first of all, I'd like to say how impressed I am that you're not only alive, but relatively unharmed. Thank you, though I don't think that's quite as impressive as it seems. He felt a bit embarrassed admitting it, but there was no sense in lying to her. My captivity was really not what I expected. Oh, her eyes narrowed. Yes, I read the reports. How do I put this? It's not that I think that you and your crew are liars by any means, but your stories are just so unbelievable. I know, but they're true. He took a deep breath. War Queen, the things I saw and experienced while I was a prisoner of the Stellar League have made me question many things that I've always held to be empirical truths. They did not kill. They did not torture or enslave us. They fed us, sheltered us with no request for anything in return. They gave us medical care. It baffled me, so I decided to try and get answers directly. The War Queen's ears twitched in agreement. It was the logical thing to do. 
She motioned for him to continue as she sipped her drink. I, um, I ended up talking with a human interrogator named Art Edwards, he continued. Edwards told me many interesting things. They told me that, uh, while the last are loathed and hated by many in the League, they do not unanimously desire our destruction. Really? Marani's tone was drenched in skepticism. Apparently, they just want us to stop killing them. If we don't hurt them, then they won't hurt us, so to speak. I see. The two sat in silence for some time as Marani pondered Hermes' words. I find that incredibly hard to believe, she said. I'm sorry, but it sounds like a trick. I have to approach these things with a great deal of suspicion for the sake of our people. And I truly respect you for that, but, um, I... Hermes felt his heart rate pick up even further. He was about to say something borderline blasphemous. More Queen, I don't think it's impossible for alien races to genuinely cooperate. I've seen the dignity that they extended to the other alien foes, and witnessed their cooperation in battle. Even when boarding our ship, I don't think it's necessary for us to be the last in the galaxy to survive. Marani nearly dropped her glass. She stared at Hermes like George Shock. Then she shut her jaw firmly, lips curling slightly, her ears pressed backwards. Hermes felt the instinct to run bubbling up at his chest. Marani took a deep, steadying breath. Her ears flicked backwards and she purred comfortingly. Oh, technician, it's okay. I understand. You, uh, you do? Of course, even the mightiest of our warriors can suffer from severe trauma as a result of close encounters with the enemy. Your mind has adapted to survive confinement by the testful, hateful aliens. It's okay. I won't hold these words against you. Huh. But, um, nothing happened to traumatize me. Or any of us. I told you. We were treated well. I have a higher tier qualification in military psychology. You're probably suffering from repressed memories. But that's something a therapist to handle. Your courage is admirable all the same. Hermes racked his brain, trying to work out what she had said, and even the slightest bit of grounding in reality. Had he been tortured and not remembered it? No, he had no injuries from torture. Every medic he'd spoken to since rescue had confirmed that. The same held true for all of his comrades. With all due respect, War Queen, you're wrong. I know what I've seen and felt. Are you sure about that? Her tone was as cold as ice, but her sweet expression did not change. If you entirely in your right mind, then that means that you are consciously proclaiming something that could bring down our entire civilization. Again, are you sure? Yes, I'm sorry my war queen, but I can't allow billions of lives to be lost when there's a chance at an alternative. Marani finished a drink and set it neatly on the table between them. Then you are putting aliens above the last. I'm putting them equal to us. No more, no less. A horrible, horrible thought occurred to Hermes. He'd been assuming up to this point that the idea of aliens really being people was something as new to the War Queen as it was to him. But what if it wasn't? What if she, on some level, Conscious of the fact that what they were doing was genocide of the highest scale. He tensed up, and once his image of her as a benevolent war queen fell away. She was dedicated to her people, yes. But at what cost? Was she a conscious overseer of mass murder, one of the greatest criminals in history? Or was she just incredibly set in her ways, blindingly leading billions of people to death and destruction because she couldn't comprehend a better way. Marani had stopped erring. That is treason of the highest kind, and that, I am afraid, means death. Please reconsider your words. If you were executed as a traitor, it would have an awful impact on your already traumatized packmates. The impulse to apologize, recant, and beg for forgiveness was almost overwhelming. But he couldn't. 
Hermish just couldn't. He also knew he couldn't win a fight with the War Queen unless he had one hell of an element of surprise and an unreasonable amount of luck. Dying for what you believed in was honorable, but living to protect billions or trillions of lives was arguably even more so. Hermes made his choice. He grabbed his glass and threw it in the War Queen's face. She easily dodged it, but it distracted her for a moment. That would have to be enough. Hermes stood and bolted for a concealed maintenance tunnel at the side of the room. The craft was absolutely riddled with these tunnels, and always had been. They were cramped enough that they had almost no tactical value to an attacker, but to a single last, fleeing an enraged foe, they would hopefully be a godsend. Alarms rang out behind him as he fled down the tunnel. He'd never been in this particular set of tunnels, but he knew that there was a grate that went from the sector's tunnels to the central comms, and from there he could probably... well... He could do something. Maybe. He probably should have thought this through better. Second right, third left, up the slope and down through the crawl space attached to the side hallways between comms and central sector. It was hard to navigate over the pounding of his heart and the blaring of alarms. He'd be shot in sight without a doubt. Boots thumped, thumped, thumped on the floor above him as he crawled towards his goal. Any time they stopped, he froze. Had they heard his movements? After an eternity, the space opened up again. There was the great Hermes squeezed through it, panting as quietly as he could. Now he was in comms maintenance tunnels, leaving them with set-off sensors by the door he exited. But for now, his exact location would be unknown. Thank goodness. He was out of breath. Hermes crept along the tunnel, ears twitching, eyes looking in every direction possible. He'd spent a lot of his training in these very tunnels, and he still knew them fairly well. What he was looking for was... Ah! There! The comms interface that was just down the tunnel from him. He padded over to it and opened it up. Using his own credentials probably would have not worked. Enough time had passed that they should have been blocked from the system by now. Fortunately, he knew a set that would probably work. Pack Admiral Tal Kifkri 053682, whom Hermes had unfortunately had to help many times during his training. Kifkri always said his password to the same number, but incremented slightly. Let's see. It had been five and a half long cycles since the last time Hermes had helped him, so that means his password should be, um. Welcome, Pack Admiral! For the first time in his life, Hermes was grateful for the idiotic end users. From here, Hermes could see anything that the pack admiral would have access to, which was quite a bit. It also gave him sufficient privileges to send an emergency broadcast. Doing that would blow his cover immediately, and he would have to run. And then Kifkri would be forced to change his password to something far more secure, and Hermes would be out of luck. You lost him! Apologies, my war queen. It seems that he knows the maintenance tunnels rather better than I do. We're getting some assistance on that front as I speak. You had better. Morani settled back into a council chair. You are dismissed, back commander. The back commander of the guard squadron turned and left. Now only Morani and her council were in the room, having convened an emergency meeting when the wayward 099827 had bolted. Well, uh, that was enlightening, she said after a minute. I have three important decrees to make, and they need to be carried out quickly and without question. Questions? They were the bane of any despot's existence. Sometimes the questions of whether her actions were truly moral kept her up at night. She'd mostly learnt to ignore that one. She was doing what was best for her people, as any ruler would. Now, a lowly technician had dared to voice that question out loud. The council were waiting for her decrees. Decree 1. Technician 099827 is to be killed on sight. Name or number for the person who does it. Decree 2. The crew of the insert name here are to be isolated immediately and guarded heavily. Tell the people that it's because they might have been exposed to dangerous alien pathogens. 
The truth is, they need to be interrogated and re-educated. They are compromised. Quiet muttering broke out at the stunning parrot decrees. Quiet! I'm not finished. Decree 3. We are changing the focus of the war against the Stellar League. From the very beginning, we have been wary of the ability of humanity to provide the League with an insight into the tactics of a Deathworld Earth Predator. Now, the real threat is apparent. They are similar enough to us that they can fool our people into thinking that they too are people. And so, we must wipe them out immediately. Change our course for the human home system. Their home world is our new priority target. The alert that flashed up on the comm screen made Hermes' blood run cold. Military decree. Priority target shifted to human homeworld, designated Earth. All units prepare for combat in Yellow Star System. Estimated number of targets, 30 billion. Oh no. The human homeworld. The world that Art Edwards and his pack came from. 30 billion people. And it was a pretty big change to the craft's course too. Would the League figure it out in time? Well... There was a reason to break cover if ever Hermes had heard one. As he typed the emergency message, he thought to his namesake, the God of Messengers. If you're real, he thought, please make sure that gets through. End of chapter. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.